Hey everybody, Professor Reed here. I hope everybody's doing well. Um uh, recording this video as a just a, a shorter video, I'm trying to do these weekly, um, and from other classes just sporadically. I wanted to talk about the discourse community essay. They usually the phase where the proposals are in, the interviews are still getting worked on. And what I want to do is just touch on some some points that are, you know, relatively important for the essay um i will say this what what i what i would recommend is just um looking at the example essays that are up on canvas um you know there's a variety of different discourse communities um you know like like they can be identity oriented they can be you know sort of on the more conspiracy side uh they can hover on a cult type of side or a religious group be they can also be sort of occupational and just a wide array of different discourse communities out there. So what I did was I went back to some of my previous classes and I took a look at some of the essays and I posted them. And then I'm going to talk about how you develop the proposal into the essay. And also uh, I'm going to talk about like two paragraphs I went and found um, that I think are pretty good examples of what to do as you develop the essay. Okay, let me go to the next slide. Yeah, that overview, oh my gosh, I'm by a computer and like that was so bold. So we'll go with it. So um, remember for this essay, it, it's it's more uh, of a neutral essay. It's not trying to judge the group per se. Now, as we mentioned before, some of these groups can be super, you know, aggressive. We'll look at one and we're sort of basing this off of some previous essays. So the interview essay, we'll look at the same group. So we did with that for some continuity, but um, yeah, it doesn't need to argue a position. So you wouldn't want to say, for example, that, you know, this specific group is bad or good. You're trying to look at it more from a neutral standpoint. And one of the things you want to do, and you want to look at this in the example essays, is try to weave in those interviews into the uh, paper. And think about this, if you've ever taken a journalism class, the idea is that you would have a, um, you know, like a secondary source, so maybe a piece of text and you want to weave in the interviews as a form of the primary source material so we're hoping that that can be a pretty natural integration and it doesn't have to be a huge chunk of the of the text you're trying to de develop, develop basically the proposal almost the way the proposal is set up it's almost like those are to form the thesis uh well actually the the topic sentences so your thesis statement should have um you know like mention discourse community sort of summarize the discourse community and place it in sort of the like like the, the almost the definition of this so how does this group basically fit in to this idea of a discourse community and you're then as the paper develops you're trying to look at you know communication hierarchy membership common goals behaviors trying to look at those ideas and you're trying to weave them in to the paper and i love my hand gestures here weaving into the paper okay so you don't want to judge the group we're going to actually write our second essay where we actually do a little bit of judgment about the group but we're holding back on that judgment we're almost doing this sort of anthropological neutral type of study and we're going to hope that's going to prepare you for other type of writing as well um this idea of discourse community also plays into a little bit of the marketing side so sort of the the corporation of this idea but you know, it comes out of this sort of uh, English PhD academic type of world. And the idea from the proposal is that forms almost like the rough outline for the paper. Paper, And think about making the paragraphs, um, different types of paragraphs. What I'm going to do moving forward, I'm going to make some videos about specific types of paragraphs that are different. I teach... 200 level classes and then a few schools that teach 101 classes 100 level classes and the theme for that those 100 classes are uh is conspiracy theories i've got a pretty good video that's about the different types of paragraphs and um you know it sort of shows um conspiracy theories and looks at like definition paragraph process paragraph cause and effect paragraph um classification division paragraph comparative contrast paragraph, background paragraph, 
and it looks at all these different wide array of different paragraphs that you can use for the essay. So, so what I'll do is I'll probably post the video on the conspiracy theories, gives you sort of a feel for how to set up the paragraphs, but I'd love to, and one of my goals, um, you know, this semester will be to create sort of example paragraphs of this, you know, like example paragraphs of the different types of paragraphs for this specific essay. But you do want to think about, you know, definition paragraph. Can I define my group? Um, in addition, we'll look at the, the incel community once again, um, and they have a ton of different words that are very graphic. In fact, I saw some that I didn't want to put into the, into the lecture, but um, you could define those terms and sort of explain what their relationship is. Or, or you could give a process paragraph. A lot of times students write about more cult type of groups and they're really successful, those papers. And they'll go sort of step by step of how the, the group is, is, you know, how they indoctrinate somebody or, or how somebody falls in to this group. And we, we had a, you know, like an example from last lecture about the fundamentalist uh, LDS, not the traditional Mormons, fundamentalist LDS. And, you know, if there's a way you could sort of explain the process all the while, keeping the idea of this discourse community, you know, something like common goals would be your topic sentence, and then you'd walk us through the steps of the process, weaving a source in there. That's a way to be really successful with the paper. In addition, you have comparative contrast types of uh, paragraphs. You can compare your, um, your community to another one. And I know in this sort of like space of the internet and some of the, you know, sort of really interesting groups that have come out of this internet space, especially like out of a TikTok community, Sometimes students will explain, well, this one group is similar to this one, and they'll show how they're different, and they'll show how they're sort of similar, and they're sort of make an argument about that. Okay, so, um, you know, like, the more you can develop types of paragraphs, the better you're going you're gonna to be in terms of your writing process. And I would hope, I would hope, as you walk out of the class, you're going to be uh, really sort of feeling very confident about the different types of paragraphs. And lastly, I'd be remiss not to mention APA, MLA. Uh, I would say that for years I've taught MLA. I'm also, I'm a tutor. Uh, I have the, um, the pleasure of reading some PhDs at one of the schools I'm at and master level stuff. So I am very familiar with APA and MLA. I would say that the lectures sort of like gear or go towards MLA. But if you wanted to write the papers in APA, the only thing I ask is that you write every single essay in the same format just to keep some continuity there. Okay, so hopefully that's helpful. What I want to do over the weekend is I want to, you know, I want to make a video that's about um, these different types of paragraphs. I want to create a few. And then I want to also, you know, narrate it. I think that'd be super helpful. Um, but just sort of keep that in mind. I think that's sort of the goal. You're taking the proposal. You're trying to expand it. And look at the examples and sort of keep that in mind. I think that's going to help guide you in the writing process because I feel like I've got Really good examples. Now, some of the examples I have are a little bit less developed. In fact, the ones we're gonna look at today, let me go ahead and go to the next slide, come from papers that were um, in the rough draft format. Okay, so, so you know, so here's one. Okay, if you look at this one, and if you wanna pause it and read it, once again, uh, it kind of came from last semester. I had a very sort of smaller class last semester. In fact, I was sort of worried it wasn't going to run and uh, ended up running. And it was actually really good because we got down to like six or seven students who were, I feel, we were, feel like we were really engaged with it. Okay. And you can see here, this is a student. Uh, she wrote the paper on the incel community and we're sort of using them as like a baseline for discussion. And look at her topic sentence. She basically took the idea from the proposal. Although the incel community, um, although the incel community I feel like that's a subject verb agreement issue there. We'll just go with it. Remember, it's a rough draft. Although the incel community is made up of different subgroups, more often than not, nice restrictive comma usage there, though. They share some common behaviors. So if you go back to the um, proposal, student basically took the, the idea of the proposal, the questions that you had, that you answered, and she developed that into a topic sentence. Remember, this isn't her thesis statement. This is her topic sentence. And then, according to the ADL, the ADL is going to be, you know, a, a website that maybe has came out a little bit of fire by certain organizations, but it basically is a, is a watchdog group for different type of hateful ideologies online. 
And so she got a quote here from uh, the ADL and she put it into italics and she did the correct thing in terms of the, the, the APA formatting or MLA format, I can't really remember. And she, she basically paraphrased the, um, the article there and sort of summarized it. Okay, so you can see here, she sort of expands on the information, adds in the, um, the, the, uh, the in-text citation, and she, she sort of breaks down what this incel type of community is and talks about red pill, black pill, which I didn't want to put that into the, um, the interview per se, but that with her previous paragraph is about sort of the language that they use and the way they sort of create memes. And, um, you know, like she class, she talks about how ADL classifies them as a, as a death cult, uh, which is really fascinating in terms of like, this sort of man space fear. I mean, we're making this um, video here in 2023. Uh, you know, there's all sorts of different discussions about what counts as that. But I really like this sort of connectivity. And as, as a rule of thumb for a paper, I would say, you know, go to think about Turnitin software. And um, they, they would recommend that you have about 80%, you know, maybe 70%, 30%, depending on the, on the length of the paper. Uh, your own thoughts versus the source control. And obviously, we want to have a higher percentage of your own analysis in the paper. But you can see here, she, she weaves the sources in, has the topic sentence, and this portion here, the analysis section, is, is a good bulk of the paper. So really well done with that. And that, for a rough draft, was pretty good. So, so once again, you know, think about the proposal. You're developing that. Go back and look at some of these examples. Sort of feed off of them. And... Here's another one, and we had mentioned this in our previous lecture, so trying to keep some continuity to it. Uh, the, the fundamentalist LDS church, right? By most, 99% 9, of people's definition, 99.9% .9 of people's definition, they would be a cult. And um, the uh, writer here, now this is a little, this was a rough draft, okay? Um, he, he references a, a uh, an article by Noel. I can't really remember the article. The only thing was that the, they don't want the two periods there with the APA or MLA formatting. Make sure to put the period after the in-text citation. But that's one of the things that we fixed. But if you can, if you look here, you can sort of see that writer introduces the idea of community and the rules of community. Which if you go back to the proposal, that was one of the things that you had to do. You had to you know, sort of like brainstorm the proposal. And he broke down that information using a smaller quote. And this sort of has that feel of like a like a process paragraph. Like what are the steps and how they're under surveillance. And and unfortunately, um, you know, this group was was just doing some horrific stuff, as you can see from the 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 paper here. And they were, you know, this sort of like amalgamation of uh, the Mormon faith, which is, you know, has a, has a lot of positive things about it, but this one group sort of went in this extreme position, and the students did a really good job of breaking down like that connection uh, there for for this specific call group. So so yes, you know, once again, students uh, did a great job last semester. You know, um, in a you know, and also keep in mind some of these examples that I'll show you are at the sort of rough draft phase of it, so we want to be aware of that as well. But, you know, like, if you can keep that idea, the proposal, and read over the examples and try to sort of feed off of those, all the while weaving in the interviews, and I'll try to give you some examples of those interviews as well, I think you should be very, very successful in the paper. Okay, so a short video, I'm going to I'm gonna save it, I'm going to try to post this tonight, uh, and if you got any questions, email me, and we will talk soon.